Is right now a good time to invest in stocks? This is the big question that everybody is asking. And no, it's not just you sitting there wondering if this is the best time to go all in. No, there are thousands of professional investors out there who are managing hundreds of millions, all asking the exact same question. And in this video, not only am I gonna be answering this question once and for all, but I'm also gonna show you how you can use this information to beat the vast majority of professional investors out there. I know the markets look turbulent right now. And yes, I am talking about right now, the very moment that you're watching this video. And how do I know that? Well, that's because the markets are always turbulent and they always will be. And whether the markets look really high or really low, those ups and downs can really mess with your head. I know a fair amount about this because I've spent a good part of my life managing money for other people. And a lot of that time has been spent calming their nerves about investing. But it always comes back to this one question. When is the best time to invest and is now one of them? Just to be clear, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you when is the best possible time to invest to achieve the best return. I'm going to assume that you have already worked out that investing is right for you personally and that you can afford to invest for the long term. And before we get into this, please can we just make a little deal between you and I? I promise not only to teach you something new, but hopefully I'm gonna make you laugh along the way. And if you do find yourself smiling or nodding along, please smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Great, now let's get into it. If you're sitting on cash that you want to invest, you have two options. You can either just invest it all right now without really caring what's going on in the market, or you can wait for that perfect moment to go all in. Now let's not beat around the bush. Obviously, the best time to invest is right at the bottom of the market, just after a big old crash. But as you can imagine, that's a pretty hard thing to time exactly. And you're just gonna have to do it all over again the next time that you wanna invest. Investing like this, where you're trying to use your own knowledge and experience to work out what to invest in and when is known as trying to time the market. And it does seem to make sense. Surely if you do enough research and analysis, then you should be able to work out whether the market is looking too expensive and it's a good time to sell, or maybe you'll work out that it's looking cheap and it's a good time to buy. And you wouldn't be alone in thinking this. There are hundreds of thousands of financial analysts and fund managers around the world using complex algorithms and other advanced techniques to try and answer this one question. Is now a good time to invest? The only problem is they're not very good at it. To help us judge how well these professional investors are actually doing, we like to use a benchmark, which is essentially just a yardstick to measure their performance against. So if they were an investor that was investing in the UK, we might compare their performance with the FTSE 100, which is the 100 largest companies in the UK. Or if they were an American investor, we might compare their performance with the S&P 500, the 500 largest companies in America. We do this because these broad indexes represent all of the companies that these professional investors could choose to invest in. And when we look at the performance of the index, we're looking at the average return across the whole market. And without needing any skill or experience, people like you and I could go out and easily get this average market return simply by investing in an index fund that mimics one of these indexes. On the other hand, these professional investors are actively selecting a subset of companies that they think are gonna outperform the market average. And we're not just talking about over one year because ultimately any monkey could select one stock that's gonna outperform the market over one year. We're talking about over long periods of time. And it does make sense. Surely if you're skilled enough, you can invest in good companies at the right time so that you can get a better return than just the market average. Otherwise, surely everyone would just invest in index funds, right? Well, when we look at this analysis of over 4,000 active fund managers over the last 20 years, we can see that only 20% have actually managed to do better than an index fund. And most have gone out of business altogether. Now you may be thinking, well, clearly the top 20% are the only ones that know what they're doing. And all I need to do is invest with them. But again, if we were to go back five years and choose a fund manager that was at that time in the top 25% of managers, they only had a 20% chance of being in the top 25% over the next five years. So clearly, despite all of their qualifications and experience, the vast majority of these active investors were unable to time the market and gain any sort of advantage. That's still not gonna stop them from telling you that they can and charging you a big fee for it. 
And as you can imagine, this is quite a controversial topic within the investment management community. And this all came to a head in 2008 when Warren Buffett, who is arguably the most famous investor of all time, challenged the hedge fund industry, who are probably the most notorious group of active investors, to a bet. And he bet them $1 million that no one could select a group of hedge funds that would outperform the S&P 500 index over 10 years. And for a long time, no one was willing to take him up on this bet. Until one man stepped forward, a guy called Ted Siders, who ran a company called Protégé Partners. And he put together a group of hedge funds that he was confident would outperform the S&P 500 over 10 years. And these are the results. Well, let's be honest, if the brightest and best of Wall Street can't beat an index fund, then what chance do you think you have? I know this sounds crazy, but clearly from looking at this data, you can see that you have a much better chance of success if you stop trying to wait for that perfect moment to invest in the perfect company and simply just invest in an index fund and invest right now. But don't worry, I'm not expecting you to believe this just yet. When I first heard about it, I didn't believe it either. And I only started to believe when I truly understood why this was happening. Why is it so hard to time the markets? Well, it has everything to do with this. I guess you're familiar with the game of guess how many sweets there are in the jar. Well, if you're not, you basically have to guess how many sweets there are in the jar and whoever guesses closest wins the jar of sweets. It's a simple game, but it actually teaches us a lot about psychology and gives us some insight into how financial markets operate. In this game, you're not allowed to see other people's guesses, but you are allowed to get as close to the jar as you want and use whatever method for coming up with your number. But even so, it's actually really, really hard. And in one such game in 2013, where they had guesses from over 200 people, their answers ranged from 409 all the way up to 5,635. Now the correct answer was 1,670. So clearly a lot of people got it very, very wrong. But here's where things get interesting. If you look at the guesses as a whole, the average guess was 1,653, which is incredibly accurate. And not only that, it was closer than any single individual's guess. This phenomenon is known as the wisdom of crowds and has been documented and researched thousands of times across multiple different contexts. Whether it's a group of farmers trying to guess the weight of an ox or gallery visitors trying to guess the number of dots on a painting. The collective guess is undeniably the most accurate. So how does this apply to financial markets and stock prices? Well, if you think about it, the stock market is the biggest guessing game in the world, with millions of people coming together each day to guess the true value of companies and markets. Let's take Apple as an example. Whenever they release new information about the number of iPhones that they've sold, or an event occurs like the US election, people rush to the markets to guess how this new information will affect the company. And they cast their votes by buying and selling shares. Now, just like with the jelly beans, a lot of people are gonna overestimate the effects of this new information, and a lot of people are gonna underestimate it. But because we've got so many people casting their votes, within minutes or sometimes even within seconds, this new information is weighed and the market moves to find a new average. And Again, just like the jelly beans, this average is unbelievably accurate. And because this new information gets priced in so quickly, we say that the markets are highly efficient. So when you look at the price of a company, you can be very confident that the price that you're seeing is actually very close to the true value of the company right now. And it's important to understand that this price has already factored in everything that we could possibly know about this company right now, but also the possibilities of anything happening in the future. So the next time you read an article saying that Apple has sold less iPhones than they were expecting, don't ever think about trading on the news because guess what? It's already priced in. However, the markets have not always been this accurate. For the wisdom of crowds to work, new information needs to be freely available and rapidly distributed. And this could be information on a company's revenues, political events, or even the weather forecast. Literally anything that can affect the prospects of a company. Now, as you can imagine, back when the stagecoach and the telegram were the main sources of information, news traveled pretty slowly. 
And this opened up opportunities for quick acting investors who heard the news before other people to get in there and quickly make a profit. And a hundred years ago, investing in the stock market was nowhere near as accessible. So you had a lot less people playing the game. And as we already know, the less people have playing the game, the less accurate it is. And because of this, there was loads of opportunities for professional investors to get in there quickly and to use their knowledge and experience to better guess the true value of companies. But fast forward to today, where we have 5G internet, live streaming news and content into our homes, and anyone with a smartphone can invest at the touch of a button, the markets have become highly efficient machines, pricing in new information almost instantly. Now don't get me wrong, the markets are not perfect and they never will be. They've definitely got it very, very wrong at times. But the majority of these inefficiencies are so small and they're closed so quickly that it's almost impossible for professional investors to use their knowledge and experience to value companies more accurately than the market. But again, that's not gonna stop them from telling you that they can. So if a huge amount of knowledge and experience doesn't give you any advantage, well, then this is actually a really good thing for you and me, the little guys. This is probably the most important point that I'm gonna make in this video. So to make sure it's well understood, let's come at this from a different direction and let's compare the efficiencies of the stock market with the inefficiencies of trying to buy property. When it comes to property, everybody is anxious about whether they're getting a good deal or not. If you're a buyer, you're concerned about getting ripped off and paying too much, or if you're a seller, you're concerned about giving it away for too little. And you'd be right to be anxious because it's really hard to work out the true value of a property. And this is largely because we just don't have enough information. As a buyer, you're not gonna have a full list of all the costs and repairs that have been done to the property. You're not gonna know what the neighbors are like. And you might not have the experience to be able to spot any critical flaws or even opportunities. And then as a seller, if there's not many similar properties on the market, you're gonna have no idea what to benchmark off. And even if there are similar properties, they're never gonna be exactly the same as yours. On top of this, you're only likely to get a handful of bids from buyers. And as we've already learned, these bids could be way off the mark. And it's in this environment where there's very little information and not enough transactions to get a reliable average that people with a lot of knowledge and experience, people like property developers, have a big upper hand because they're gonna be much better at guessing the true value of the property than you are and ensuring that they're gonna get a good deal. So yes, the little guys like you and me have the perfectly good reason to be anxious about all this. But just imagine, and this is totally hypothetical, that all of the information that you needed to guess the true value of that property was publicly available. And instead of having a few viewings and receiving a handful of bids, there were thousands of people viewing the property each day and each one of them made a public bid. And on top of this, this exact same process was going on in thousands of other identical homes with hundreds of properties changing hands each day. Now, some of the people buying and selling may be experts, but some of them may not have a clue. But as we know, if we have enough people guessing the true value of the property, the average, so the market price that we arrive at, is likely to be extremely accurate. And in this environment, as a total newbie that knows absolutely nothing about property, how much more confident would you be that you're getting a fair price? You'd be pretty damn confident. And in this environment, people like property developers that are very good at guessing the true value of a property don't really have any advantage because the market price is already giving everyone a very clear indication of what that is. And as we know, the market price is likely to be much more accurate than any one man's guess. And this is exactly what happens every day in efficient stock markets, which is why we really need to turn this question on its head. When is the best time to invest in stocks? Well, when is a bad time to invest in stocks? Because of the efficiency of markets, whenever you do choose to invest, you know that you're gonna be getting a fair price, given everything that we know about the company or the market right now, and everything that may happen in the future. Yes, new information may come to light, which causes the markets to fall, but there is no way that you could have known that at the time. Nobody knows what the markets are gonna to do tomorrow, or next week, or next month. But if you believe in capitalism and that markets will eventually go up and you're willing to invest for the long term, then there is no better time to invest than right now. It's kind of like playing a game of heads and tails, but there's a slightly higher chance of getting a heads than a tails. Now, of course, there's gonna be long periods where you're getting a lot of tails, 
and no one has any idea of when that will be. But if you keep playing the game for long enough, you know that heads will come back. And the longer that you play the game, the more heads you're gonna get. So start playing as soon as you can. I have no doubt that with everything that you've learned today, that you can go out and beat the vast majority of professional active investors out there. And all you need to do is invest right now and invest in a diversified portfolio of low cost index funds. And whilst you sit there with your investments on autopilot, these professionals will be toiling away trying to beat the markets. And for a short period of time, some of them will. But as time goes on, the markets will catch up. And that means you're gonna catch up too. And once these professionals have factored in the trading costs that are involved with actual trading, you're gonna find yourself in a much better position. I'm aware that I've covered a lot of the reasons of why you should be investing right now and why you should be using these things called index funds. However, I haven't really covered exactly how you should go about it. So you may find a video that tells you exactly how to do that up here or up here, or if it's not there, then I obviously haven't made it yet. So keep your eyes peeled.